What's up everybody, Best Mouth here, bringing you another Halo Infinite video. Today we're talking about Capture the Flag and how to win your ranked games on Capture the Flag. Remember to like and subscribe if you learn anything new today. Remember to join the Discord server, links in the description. We play games together. All the people you see in the games I'm playing with today and the clips you see today are on the Discord server. We all play together. We have a great time. Come join us and have a blast. All right, let's get into the video. So first, we're going to be going over counter pushing. What that is, I will explain through this scenario. So as you can see, my teammates are on my flag, but I am on their flag. How did I get in this position without any contest? Well, they pushed our flag. They put three players on the right of our flag, pushing the right side of our flag. And so knowing this, I pushed towards the left. I knew that my three players in the position they were in, my teammates were going to be able to handle that push. So I pushed up left to try and make a, this is a counter push. So now that I am at their flag and my teammates have already dealt with their push on our flag, they looked over, they see, oh, there's a guy on their flag. And I know this is the last guy. So I push him and grab the flag with no contest. So I grab the flag here and now I'm gonna play in real time. I get the flag to our flag in 20 seconds flat. And I do this by efficient flag tossing. So as you can see, I'm taking damage, but they cannot keep up with me because I'm just flag tossing away here and my teammates are running over to assist me. And yep, you see right here, we get the capture. So essentially to counter push, you want to wait for the enemy team to push. And this kind of counter push is best done with one or two players. So you have efficient defense and you want to push around to where the enemies are not. Use your teammates' callouts, use the information you have to take the path of least resistance to their flag. All right, going in the next clip here, we're gonna be going over how to play the objective when it's down, like in the middle of the map. So we're on Behemoth here, and we have just grabbed their flag. My teammate here is going up the lift, but he gets killed halfway up the lift. So this puts the flag in a really bad spot because it's right in between the tower and their spawn. So if we die, they're for sure going to get the return because the flag is so close to their spawn. We don't have a line of sight on it from our spawn, and they have a line of sight on it from their spawn. So it looks like they're going to get it if we cannot pull this off. So what I choose to do is instead of fighting them at their spawn, I'm already taking damage. I know I need to get out of here. I go up the lift too, and I position myself around the tower. So, but now watch how I play this. I see so many players, um, they, they just kind of panic when they see this right here, like uh, the returning, they kind of panic and they're like, oh, I got to reset it. And they reset it, but then they die and it ultimately gets returned. So it is very important to clear all the enemies out set their respawns back so you actually can grab the flag and make progress with it so you'll see I, i'll do that right here and uh so i'm just kind of i know they're gonna they're gonna push out because here's the thing too so that position if they want to return that flag if they want to get on that flag and return it faster that's a really bad position for them to be in if i'm challenging them from tower because i can go up tower i can challenge them from a high right angle or i can peek left and i still have elevation and they have you see like basically no cover they can kind of use this rock here but i know they're going to push out to this flag so uh two of them take the lift i never recommend more than one player taking the lift at a time and uh so they as they're taking the lift they already turn around to like fight my teammate uh here harley and uh they're they're looking at the objective so they're completely oblivious to me and so because of this i'm able to get the back smack here and then this guy just runs right by me because they were so oblivious right this seems crazy this is the worst player in the world no it's just they were so focused on uh harley here that when i back smacked his teammate for a split second he just thought i was his teammate because I, we were so close together and I basically just took his place. So for that split second when we're next to each other and he's just kind of running next to me, like he just thinks I'm his teammate. So that's how I'm able to get this easy second kill here. And I've had like similar things happen. Like uh, th this can happen to any player, no matter how good you are. This is just a reminder to be aware of the entire situation. Don't just, they were uh, so focused on this one player and the flag. So I'm able to get two of them here. Now the flag looks clear, right? But then I see this guy coming way back from mid here. And uh, I'm like, okay, I have to fight him before I can reset this. So I fight him as well and get the triple right there. And uh, then I grab the flag. Only when I know it is safe do I actually grab the flag. So we're going to get in the next clip here. 
What is this? Oh, okay. So <laughs> this is kind of a brain fart, but like this is kind of how I play it off. So I just kind of, I don't know why I thought, like, I thought there was a teammate over here we were going to make a play. I don't know why. There was no, like, call out for it or anything. But I mindlessly decide to go up this lift and straight into their spawn where they all are. So I'm like, okay, this is bad. How can I play this? I see a lot of t a lot of people, uh, when they're in the enemy spawn, they just, you know, grab the flag and die. Like, they'll just make a grab and then they get killed and it gets returned. So instead, I kind of try to play my life here and take angles. Um, you can look at my positioning guide if you want a little more in depth on that. We'll go into it a little bit here. Uh, but I basically just try to play time, set back the respawns and wait for my teammates to come so I can actually make a decent grab. So uh, we'll just play this in real time. So I see the first guy, I'm like, oh no. Uh, and then I start getting shot from the, from the right here. So this guy, has really low sensitivity. I don't know if you notice that, but uh, if you're on controller, which this guy definitely is, I can tell by the way he was turning. Look, he knows I'm here. It's not that he's like bad in the sense that he doesn't know where I am. His sensitivity is just way too low. So I'm able to get shots on him way before, way before he can even like turn and look at me. But then he kind of grenades me out. Those are two pretty good grenades and I have to push up. So uh, notice how like right here, this guy's been shooting me. I, I'm aware of this guy. If I push into him, right, this guy can still shoot me. But if I jump out this way, right, if I jump out this way, this will cover me. This pillar here will cover me from this guy, and I can just deal with this guy at once, right? So I jump left, deal with him. He cracks my armor, and then, oh, no, I have low health. I, I just regain, regain. I sit by the flag. I know I reset two of their spawns. I know another guy isn't really near me. And I know, so I know the only threat is this guy over here. I'm just worried he's going to grenade me out. Luckily, he doesn't or he misses his grenades. I'm not quite sure. Uh, and then, but I'm still here and my teammates are still not here. So I'm still fighting this, still trying to take angles. Notice how I isolate each gunfight. Like this is a 2v1. I don't want a 2v1, I want a 1v1, so I peek out left, assuming someone's going to try and flank me, someone's going to go off the ramp, try and flank me, um, and kind of squeeze me here in the middle. So I peek left, and sure enough, this guy peeks out, and I get that easy 1v1. I see the other guy peeking out here. Uh, I think the clip ends, but uh, uh, yeah, right here, I see him pe peeking out here, so I go back right, and I deal with him. We're ultimately able to get a good grab on the flag, but I think, yeah, the clip ends right there. So, uh... Here we are on Aquarius. Okay, uh, I'm not going to spend too long on this one. I've shown this clip on my channel before. Uh, so I think this was in the grenade video. Uh, yeah, so they're taking our flag. And uh, I just kind of spawn in pretty pretty much opposite. Like, I just spawn in pretty much opposite of where he is on the map. Uh, I mean, opposite would be like diagonal. But you know what I mean. He's pretty far out. And uh, they killed a teammate here. We have their flag as well, though. I think they get the return as we're, uh, as we're returning ours, though. So uh, I go after this guy. And uh, see how focused he is on my teammate that's a little closer. Like, he should know um, that uh, it's more important uh, to turn around and deal with me. Because he has teammates over there that can already deal with my teammate here. And so he's essentially just giving me a free kill and uh, setting his respawn back. But now they have the flag right here, okay? So seemingly this is an impossible situation because of how far he is and the shots to kill it takes for the BR to kill a player, right? So there's no way I'm going to be able to shoot and kill him before he turns around this corner. Knowing this, I'm like, okay, but I have my grenades. And flag players, this is a reminder, don't be too predictable when you have the flag. I do this a lot too, where I just kind of, you know, closest distance, I know he's just going to run straight towards his flag spawn, right? So I can use my grenades to throw them ahead of where he's going. And so he kind of runs into them and it kills him and it works here. Uh, here, I'll just play real time for you. And uh, yeah, you see the grenade kills there. And then, but then watch another big mistake here the enemies make as uh, they double put. And then this guy just starts flopping on the flag. Like I was talking about earlier, like they see the flag and they're just like, oh, reset. Like, he literally just ignores me and allows me to completely crack his shields here. I'll play it in real time. I know it's annoying. I know I do that too much. And then this guy, look, he, he literally doesn't even look at me. Uh, and so here we have another clip. Uh, this uh, bizarre. I have, again, I've showed this on my channel. This is in my grapple shot video. Um, so this is essentially how you solo cab. 
Uh, when you solo cap, especially if the team is in their spawn and this is not like a counter push, like they're playing super defensive here. As you can see, it's 1-0. They're just trying to uh, run out the clock here. There's two minutes left. So they're not going to push us. There's going to be no opportunity to counter push. And they're kind of dominating us mid, right? They have really good map control and they keep killing my team mid. We can't really get a good push off, but I get a good spawn with the grapple shot. This is where you can use equipment to kind of make a solo push. And I'm going to make a solo push because I know there's no time to wait for my teammates and it's just not working. So what I do is I run straight through mid doors closest distance to the flag as I have really like poor information on where the enemy team's positioned. I just want to get there as fast as possible. And I used to grapple shot three times here in three different ways to get the flag capture. All right. So so the first one I do is I uh, I just go up here in order to save time and make sure that nobody can really like shoot me too much as I'm like trying to jump up these boxes here. I always get shot when I'm trying to do this and the enemy's in their spawn. So I just grapple up real quick. Oh, <laughs> grapple up real quick and then uh, grab the flag. I immediately start taking damage, though, from uh, multiple angles. So I know I need to get out of here or I'm dead. So what I do is I evade death with the grapple shot this time. I stick it to the corner right here, use it to slingshot my momentum off of the wall here. And so I'm able to get out of this scenario with little health. And now here I know this is where you can kind of a little bit of psychology play. Uh, they were really, you know, uh, damaging me bad there. They're going to assume I'm going to fall back and wait for my team because it would be crazy to push again 1v3, 1v4. It would be crazy. So I, but knowing that, knowing that they're not going to expect that, I push courtyard. I go right here, push courtyard in an attempt to flank them. So I, I push here. I use the grapple shot for the third time here. So I could grapple him and get into him, kill him because my teammate Jimmy here, uh, damaged him a little bit. But I don't know where the other teammates are, so grappling into him could mean my death if they are positioned correctly. So instead of grappling him, I grapple the flag itself and bring it to me. This really confuses them, and I, it allows me to go straight back to tower and uh, right into my teammates where they can provide adequate cover, and I just flag toss it over. But then here, uh, what I didn't touch on in the grapple shot video, which is also good about this clip, uh, and this game is that we get into this position right here. And uh, this clip is a little sped up, by the way. If it looks a little funny, that's why. So um, so this clip right here, this was the majority of the game before they got the capture. We captured each other's flags in the first minute and just held them at each other's spawns for the whole, like, 10 minutes. And then they got a capture. We kind of screwed up. So uh, in these situations, you really, like... You kind of want to have one player on the flag at all times, right? Because you need to reset it constantly. Like, uh, I've literally had the flag returned just from, like, being too focused and forgetting that it was, you know, the time was going down. So uh, you want to have one player on the flag. You want to have one player kind of mid-area, but not too far out to where they can rotate if they push you really hard. And uh, and then you want to have two players uh, pushing, trying to return your flag. And that mid player, again, if uh, your two players pushing the flag, like they get a pick or two, they're like, hey, we're going to we're going to get this return right now. That mid player can rotate up to them and help them out and get that return. So that, that's kind of the setup for this kind of this kind of game that will happen just kind of naturally sometimes. Um, and you just kind of want to hold back here. I'll play it uh, until your teammates are able to return the flag. And so, see, I'm just checking angles. I keep resetting it, keeping an eye on the flag. Um, I'm keeping it kind of on the right side because they like to push left a lot. Like there, yep. <laughs> these these guys really like pushing left for some reason. Get the easy kill. See now that, oh, okay, okay. So right here, they called out, oh, Jim got a pick here, right? They called out, they're like, oh, oh. You know, uh, we're returning, we're returning. So he pushed up, and now they have three players returning the flag. This is what gets us the return, is this setup right here. And we get the return. And that secures us the overtime for this game. And that is how you solo push using equipment. So here we have some defensive sniping, some return sniping. So they just grabbed our flag and got it off the lift to tower on the right side, right? So my teammates start pushing right side tower to contest the flag, but I have the sniper rifle in this case. This is how you can use 
the power weapons to your advantage. So I have the sniper rifle. So I decide instead of pushing with my team on right side, I go left side. And so this, what this does is it allows me to get a very good oversight over the area. So my teammates are right here. They can't really see what's going on. Oh, I'll, I'll move forward a little. They can't really see what's going on here, right? And the enemy spawn is over here. Most likely they're going to be pushing from right here. So I can make these call outs and do damage to these players and while my teammates can't. So I'm providing both uh, cover fire and information for my teammates in order to get the successful return. Uh, and uh, I'll just play it right here. So go up the lift, switch to sniper. So now I'm providing overwatch from opposite tower. Uh, my teammates are trying to push. I get the first pick. Jiggy is pushing. He's calling out to me. The second guy, I call him out to Jiggy, but he's already cracked, so he dies. But I trade him out. Remember, trading is always essential. It is always good when your teammates die to trade out the player that killed them. And then I'm able to get this pick here, which allows my teammate up there to complete the return. So, uh, and then this is kind of uh, interesting right here. So I run out of ammo. Uh, you can still engage this range with the BR. I see a lot of players, when they have the sniper, they kind of, they start missing and they just decide to keep shooting and missing. Sniper ammo is very valuable. And if you just kind of start wasting it, it's not good. Uh, remember to use the BR. In a lot of instances, it is actually better and more consistent than the sniper rifle. For a lot of players um and so lastly we're gonna go right here so uh sniping can also be very useful for preventing a return in instances like this where there's literally no other way to do it like i needed the sniper here to get this kill so i get the first kill here and i see this player is coming to return uh or not to return to capture our flag but I have the sniper rifle, so I'm able to take him down immediately before his teammates spawn in and can help him. Because I know he's just going to go behind this rock and his teammates were going to spawn in any second. They would have spawned and they would have been able to help him get that captured. So, but since I had the sniper rifle, I'm able to take him down quick, get that flag down in a wide open area. That's kind of, that's kind of hard for them to come grab it and then, you know, get out of the way. So we have good oversight. I have my teammate right here who also has good oversight. Uh, but anyway, that's all for today. Remember to like and subscribe if you learned something new or enjoyed the video. Let's catch you guys in the next one.